So let's do exactly the same thing again. One half extra turn. So now these are getting a little tight now, but they're still not hard to turn. They're still nice and easy to get a, a definite exact turn. There's no squeaking on the bolts. Okay. I'm going to just give that a little extra because it's a little loose. There we go. So now, again, turn the snares off. Okay, now it's starting to sound nice and high like a snare should. And again, it is in tune. But it's still got that deep sound. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I can usually test it if it's uh, if it's a good start to a roll uh, just before my 10-inch tom, then it's usually where I prefer it. So let's try that. Eh, it's not quite high enough yet. So let's just turn the snare on to see where it is performance-wise. Okay, now that sounds a lot better. For the doubles and things like that, sounds a lot crisper. But personally, once again, I like it much higher than that. And remember, your snare, not only do you play backbeats, thick, uh, you know, two and four, but you play a lot of uh, intricate stuff, and the tighter it is, the easier it is to play finger control and things that rely on bounces and things like that. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you go, you know, ultra high, but I am going to show you what happens if you do. So now we're going to do one more half turn. You can hear the head cracking a little bit, so maybe just reseated bits. It's a double ply head, so get the glue undone. Now let's. Now it's starting to sound like a timbali. Still not a 14-inch timbali, but it's still pretty tight. And as you can see and hear, the action is great. Effortless double strokes. Okay, so let's turn the snare on, see how it sounds. Okay, so for me, it's exactly where I want it right there. You got good control, it's tight enough to bounce. It's high. Sounds good as a timbali. It's higher than my 10 inch tom. And it sounds good as a snare, as a backbeat. Still got a little bit of balls behind it, but it, it's also got that high and a very fast decay for the actual snare. So now let's go a little bananas. I'm going to give it another full tighten on each one. You can actually hear the head straining and going as I do this. You can hear the whining, just the vibration of it. Okay? So now... It's basically a timbali. It sounds good as a timbali. And you can bounce all over the place. But my suspicions are if I turn the snares on, it's going to sound totally choked off and just a little too high for my taste. So we turn the snare on. It 
it just sounds a bit fruity, to use one of your words. It, it just sounds a bit uh, fey. It's got a snare sound, but there's no v real vibration behind it. So I would typically take it down a notch. I mean, there are uh, there's uses for that. If you're playing blast beat, you know, you want that really tight, consistent feel. And I'm sure most drummers like that have their snare crank right up. I don't like to have it too tight. I mean, this is really tight. So what I would do now is just back it off a little bit, maybe half a turn. And snares are very forgiving in terms of tuning. As long as, you know, because there are so many more lugs, as long as they're pretty close, uh, you're going to be in tune. As long as you do everything evenly and the drum's well made and the bearing edge looks good and the, the head is well made, uh, you're going to be in tune as long as you give each lug the same amount of uh, turns. So let's just... Timbali, but maybe if you had a 16-inch Timbali. Put the snares back on. And that's where I want to be. So that's all the tips I can give you on tuning a snare, but it's much more... Um, intricate than doing a tom because a tom to me only really has one good sounding voice if it's a well-made drum it should have that note and that's where you should tune it to yes you can screw around with it a little bit if you have another drum that's a different size or the same size for instance this is a 10 and this is a 10 but this 10 is you know a fourth higher than this because it's a concert tom so there's no resonant head and uh, I tune it a little higher because it's forgiving. It's a 10-inch head, and it's a nice thick pinstripe that I can crank up without hurting. But on a on a snare, you can you can go through all those. I went through five, I think five, if memory serves, um, five different tunings, and they all sounded different, but they were all in tune. So uh, pick your pick your type of music. Uh, sorry. Pick your snare for the type of music you want to play. So if you want to play really intricate jazz stuff, you might want to tighten it tight, but not too tight that it's really, really high. So you can still do the finesse stuff, but it doesn't sound too high, and it still sounds like a snare. Uh, and if you're doing the you know, the thrash or the, s the blast beats, then you might want to just crank it as until these things won't, won't go anymore. And then, uh, you know, it... It uh, it'll be really staccato-y when you hit it. I like it somewhere in the middle. I like it tight enough so it sounds like a snare drum, but loose enough so that it, uh, you know, I I still have to work at at uh, the action of my f um, sticks because you know it's so easy to get lazy on a snare if it's cranked right up, and then you know you'll suffer around the kit because you don't have the same feeling on the snare as you do so I still like to s feel a little give when I hit the snare I, I feel I like to hear or see the um, you know it move and uh, that's about all I have to say about snare tuning so I hope I helped those of you who needed help and I helped myself by tuning up my new snare so see you later